welcome back to another episode of the Semi Sages of the Pages. And today we're doing first page critiques. But before we get started, my name's Teresa. I'm Morgan. <laughs> That's Morgan. This is Molly. Thank goodness we got that figured out because it took us years to figure out our names. Mm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're here doing first page critiques. <laughs> and uh, we follow the model of even better if. So what that means is that we'll tell you how much we love it and we love all of the work. There's always something wonderful to say. Um, and then we'll just offer just a little bit of critique. It would be just a little bit better if dot, dot, dot. And you Sound good? agree with us and we will probably disagree with each other. That's the most fun when we're like, <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> and that's what's fun because writing is subjective. So at the end of the day, follow your heart and hopefully we something we say here will strike a chord and take your writing to the next level. Or if you're just watching this to learn about editing or helping each other edit, Maybe this will help you get ideas for your own writing. Exactly. Exactly. So are we ready to begin? Oh, I am so excited because right. I can read this one. I'm oh, so we are excited. in the genre today, not of fantasy. Ooh. We are in the genre of alternative history. Oh, yes. my favorite. And this is in Wales, and I'm sure there's some Welsh terms. Please, whoever wrote this, be kind. I will try to do my very best in their pronunciations. I am blessed enough to get to read this work and I'm really excited. And on that note as well, we always keep your name anonymous, but the author is always, always welcome to comment below. Uh, it's announce who they are, announce where to buy their stuff, everything else like that. So, all right, ready? Drum roll, here we go. Prologue, St. Sibe's Church, Holy Head, Holy Island, Anglesey, Wales, 7 August, 1948. A handful of journalists came to report on the funeral of a historical curiosity. Her moment of notoriety had passed 30 years earlier, but it was common knowledge that in 1915, she had caused the downfall of a prime minister and the end of the Great War. Hugh Richards, a reporter from Pathé News, wandered, wondered but Violet Bonham Carter, the liberal prime minister and shadow foreign secretary was doing at the funeral of the mistress of her long dead father who had served as prime minister over 30 years ago. Miss Bonham Carter, tall and ramrod straight with her wavy graying blonde hair scrapped into a French twist under her wide brimmed black straw hat wore a black silk suit with a long full skirt that reached just above her ankles. Richards thought it was typical of Miss Bottom Carter to wear couture from Christian Dior, even in a small town in North, North Wales. Richard had requested this assignment because his mother was from Holy Head and his mother's eldest sister was the longtime lady's maid of the deceased. As the eminent lady left the church, Richard shouted at her, why are you here at Venetia Stanley's funeral? Miss Bonham Carter turned to glare at Richard. Miss Stanley was the dearest friend of my girlhood, she growled, but she caused your father suicide. She did not mean it. And she repented for it every day for the rest of her life. After a lengthy pause, Miss Bonham Carter sighed. That is all I have to say on that matter. Thank you, gentlemen. Wow. Oh, I love the history. Oh, and I love this time of um, the, the late 1940s, early 1950s. So much was happening in the world. It's a great, great time to write a, to write a book, um, especially in alt history. Um, and you don't see much said in the 50s. So this is this is exciting. I love the dialogue. I was having so much fun reading it. You could see at the point where I got sucked in and was just like super excited to, to go back and forth. It was really fun. The dialogue section particularly was really fun to read. One of the things that I love about this is there is a lot of controversy about prologues. 
But I think this is a great example of what an effective prologue could do. Because it's not actually a prologue. Like, if you read it, you can infer that this is actually in the future from the story. You know, most of the story takes takes place in the past. Um, but it sets it up incredibly well. You get so much information. You, you are setting so many expectations for your readers. You're setting up so many promises. You know who the main characters of the story are already. And you've done it in such a succinct way that doesn't feel like info dumping. Mm. That's an an interesting comment, though. And I would challenge that a little bit. If um, your instincts are right and the prologue is set in the future of the story, I would actually be confused as a reader. If I if I went back in time, I'd be like, oh, oh, not what I was expecting. Um, and it, it's not a bad thing. It just would it just would be one of those like, oh, oh, OK, we went back, not forward. I think the easiest, um, a possible solution that might be easy for that is at the end of the scene, just to make it really clear using heading, you know, or the way the transfer between scenes happens. Um, I'll push back in a little different way. I think it might be a little stronger if the exposition is mixed a little more in the dialogue. Um, and also, like, the Teresa always makes these really rich and intelligent comments about how sometimes when you describe a person or their characteristics, you can add so many descriptors that it's hard to know what to hang on to. And as I was reading, I was having a hard time with like the black and the black and the black. <laughs> and so that word seemed to kind of be coming up a lot. And then it was a little bit um, drowning out. I mean, it's a funeral. So of course that's why, but I'm wondering if before, like if that can be, put in with a dialogue so that I can see the people who are talking more as they're talking instead of front loading the information. Does that make sense, Teresa? Maybe yeah. Say yeah. Or maybe try to work action into it. Um, the wind blew her long uh, black full skirt against her knees or kind of, you can see her legs outlined because the wind caught, caught her skirts against her legs. Some, you yeah, know, something like that. Well, well, for, for me, the, the even better if here, is like you have this rather long sentence that's describing very precisely what um what she's wearing you know and it goes in her hair and her bun and it like all like it, it goes through everything um which like morgan said because you're not focusing on one thing you're listing it it, it can be hard to focus on like what's important right but i think then the the even better if here is the next sentence is actually the important one Richards thought it was typical of Mrs. Bonham, Bonham Carter to wear couture from Christian Dior, even in a small town in Northern Wales or North Wales. Like that's the important bit. That's what's telling us about her character. Like she's wearing couture in this few, like, like that's, that's something to focus on. That's important. That's interesting. It tells us about character and situation. And I don't, I don't know if the entire previous description is needed when you have that sentence that's helpful. It'd be and nice you... to pick up one detail of couture that juxtaposition juxtaposed regular funeral attire mm. because you are asking the reader to know that and I think it would be better to help show that. So, so instead what you're of saying is readers don't might not know what is standard funeral attire in 1948 North Wales. That's what you're saying, right? And I was also saying they might not also know what couture is from that time. Mm. So just like, yeah. That's yeah, a great point. I like that. I think um, one thing that I got a little bit confused on, um, and this is, this is something um, to really be aware of, how many characters you introduce in the first couple of pages. Because for me, I get confused. Um, so we've got... Um, Hugh Richards, who's the journalist. We've got Violet Bo Bonham Carter. Um, and we've got this line, Richards had requested this assignment because his mother was from Hollyhead and his mother's eldest sister was a longtime maid of the deceased. At that point, I'm like, who? Um, and then, and oh, and then we've got Vanita Stanley's funeral too. That's a lot of people to keep track of in a very short, uh, word count. 
Um, so just maybe something just to kind of keep, keep an eye on. Well, even just taking his motive for being at the funeral, I don't know that it's helpful there. Let us get attached to him a little bit more and show the motive throughout. And I think that that, that detail will be cherished more once we've fallen in love with the scene. Yeah, I would agree with that too. That would be my recommendation would be to trim that and place it a little bit further. Um, but I don't know what comes next. So um, sometimes sometimes you come up with a plan and then you keep reading and you go, oh, never mind. I'm going to delete that. <laughs> it is. That is a great point because we are just reading a first page. We don't know if there's more to the prologue or if this is the entire prologue. Maybe the scene ends here. We don't know. So we just have to give you our best input, which might be wrong. And it might be, you know, out of context of the rest of the story. But we'll try. We'll do our best. Thank All you right. for submitting. This was so lovely. It was so fun to get to read a history. Um, you have beautiful prose, wonderful, vivid description, and your use of dialogue was a blast to read. Yeah, I have questions. I would keep reading. And if you want to learn more about the sages, um, please join our Discord. Jump on where we have the greatest writing community in the planet, in my biased opinion. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed this. Also, if you have your own ideas about how to make this piece even better, if, please put them in the comments below. We so appreciate it. Our channel is growing. and Our community is vibrant. And it's just been so fun. And welcome. Yeah. And if you're interested in having your story read, uh, you go to www.semisagesthepages.com. Again, it's in the description. So check it out, submit, and maybe we'll read it aloud. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye now.